In third strike, you can hold back to continuously block attacks. This is typical for most 2D fighting games nowadays. However, you also have a slightly riskier, but more rewarding version of blocking with the parry. In situations where you can parry or block, it's almost always better to parry. Parrying attacks let you recover instantly, removes all chip damage, and gives you a lot of meter, but it requires precise timing when blocking does not. Be sure to also check out Baphael's video in the description below. He made a video about parries many years ago. You can go ahead and check his video out if you want to know more practical applications of parries. This video will be focusing on how parries work mechanically, although I do plan to make several videos about Third Strike in the near future. Let's start with the basics. To block, you hold back, but to parry, you tap forward right as an attack attack connects with you. Mashing parries does not help because when you attempt and fail a parry there is a short cooldown so if I tap forward and then try to parry it doesn't work. But there is no whiffing animation or anything during this cooldown which means that I can do other things like block. This makes throwing fireballs in the neutral game a bit worse than you would expect from a Street Fighter game. Number two is no chip damage. So if he blocks this, he takes a little bit of damage. Number three is you recover instantly. So if he blocks the attack, there's no way for him to punish. But if he parries the attack, then he can. You'll usually have plenty of time to get whatever punish you want on the opponent. And as a result, even at high level play, you still get a lot of like raw launching hits. It doesn't matter how safe you play, as long as you are attacking, it's possible for the opponent to parry you and get a full combo. Now watch out for multi-hitting attacks, because you might have to go for multiple parries in situations where you weren't expecting to. Although quick attacks like throws are usually still fast enough to get a hit in between hits. And finally, you cannot block in the air, but you can parry in the air. So if you think you're about to get anti-aired, it's either get hit or go for the parry. Just like blocking, you have to deal with high and low parries. Tapping forward gives you a high parry, and tapping down gives you a low parry. Now here are the general rules as to how you have to parry attacks. 1. You cannot parry throws or hit grabs. You cannot block throws, but you can block hit grabs. As far as I know, only Oro and Alex have hit grabs. Number two, if you're in the air, you always tap forward to parry. You do not have to worry about high and low parries while in the air. Number three, attacks that must be blocked low must also be parried low. Number four, all attacks that must be blocked high must also be parried high. Thus, all of these next rules only apply to moves that can be blocked high or low. Number five, most light attacks and most crouching punches can be parried high or low. This includes Crouching Light Punch, which is this game's crouch tech. Many special moves, particularly uppercut style moves, can be parried in either direction. And if none of those other rules apply, then it's basically random whether you can parry it high or low. So now let's talk about the parry window. How long do you have to perform the parry? Depending on the situation, the window will be different. Although note that you should always quickly tap and release the parry, because the window is actually made shorter if you press and hold the direction. Air parries have a window of 7 frames, with a 20 frame cooldown if you miss it. Ground parries have a 10 frame window, with a 23 frame cooldown period if you miss it. And specifically if you ground parry against the opponent's jumping attack, or you anti-air parry, it is only a 5 frame window, with 18 frames of cooldown if you miss it. If an attack would hit you during block stun, you were forced to go for a red parry, which has a 2 frame window for normal attacks and a 3 frame window for specials. This is to decentifize you just going for parry, 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 parry all the time during block strings. And this game does not have absolute guard, which means that if you try to parry too early, you'll just end up getting hit. Now let's talk about the parry hit stop. With each parry, the parrier and the thing getting parried enter a 16 frame long hit stop, which gives both players time to react to the parry. In addition to these 16 frames, the thing getting parried can suffer up to 4 more hit stop frames depending on the attack parried. Now the thing getting parried is usually the opponent character, but it could also be a projectile, in which case the one who threw the projectile does not suffer any hit stop from the parry. And your only options are to block, 
parry or tech throws. You cannot move or attack during those frames. Note that because you cannot jump, you also cannot escape command grabs, which means that if the opponent has a command grab that's fast enough, they can literally punish you for parrying their attack. During this 16 frame hit stop, you can input attacks and they will automatically be buffered to occur as soon as the parry ends. This actually allows for an interesting option select because of Kara's. If I do a normal attack and then on the next frame input throw, it'll do the first frame of the attack and then go for the throw. But if I do that during the hit stop of the parry, I get the normal attack. So if you input two or more things during a would-be parry hit stop window, the first thing you input will come out if it's a parry, and the second thing you input will come out if it's not a parry. And this only works if the second thing is a throw or a special move, because those are the only things that you can kata. So how should parries affect the way you play the game? There are several things that you should consider, because having parries changes the way you have to think about certain aspects of the game that you thought were cut and dry. The first of which is anti-air. Because of air parries, you can't just pick the move that you think has the highest success rate and just go with it. There's actually a mix-up there. Number two, you can't autopilot your mix-ups, where players know the frame advantage of their attacks and know the frame traps that cannot be avoided. In third strike, if the opponent knows what attack you're going to use and when, you'll just eat a full punch. So you'll need to mix up between high parry-only attacks, low parry-only attacks, multi-hitting attacks, and unparryable attacks as well as the timings of when you go for these attacks. Once you do this, the opponent is more likely to block an uppercut instead of parry, and it becomes similar to other Street Fighter games. But you always have to keep parries in the back of your mind. Or the front. So that's it for the basics of parries. Let me know which videos about Third Strike you would like to see next.